Will one West Coast tight end live up to the promise this season? Is one rookie wide receiver starting to lose his luster in main event drafts? And who will be the 2021 High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour hype guy? Plus, KFFSC multi-league champ Rob Fetcher, 2018 KFFSC main event co-champ Danny Miller, and the host, the co-host, of the Deep End Fantasy Football Podcast with Draft Sharks, Adam Krautwurst, will all join the program tonight as we broadcast live from Caesars Southern Indiana at the 2021 KFFSC Live Events. We've got a great show for you. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. Welcome to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by MyFFPC.com, with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for analysis from the best players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here's Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Uh, and I want to thank you, uh, send a quick uh, thank you out to the Quiet Hollers. Check out their music at quiethollers.com. They are the re- uh, responsible for the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour intro music each and every week. Greetings and salutations to all the Balkolics out there. Welcome to, into the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by myffpc.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman. My, uh, uh, we, we have a trio of guests coming up this evening. Rob Fetcher going to join us. Uh, we're also going to talk to Danny Miller. Adam Krautwurst also hopping aboard tonight as well as my co-host, Farrell Elliott, the, the only person in the live audience here at Caesars Southern Indiana taking in the podcast. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun to, uh, to do this show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, shout out to the chat room right now. We got Kevin Williamson in there, the Bourbon City Baller himself, uh, popping aboard, um, and uh, many, many more in there. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in there uh, tonight. We'll do our best to get to the questions as we move on through the program tonight. Don't forget, you can follow the show on Twitter at HSFFO or at Eric Balkman, and you can always check out the KFFSC at KFFSC.com. You can post on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash hour as well. Uh, if you want to chime in and talk with us, give us a call at 347-426-3682. That's 347-426-3682. Uh, HighStakesFantasyFootball at gmail.com is where you can email us. If you have any questions for us, now is the time to send them. Uh, we'll try to get to all the chat room questions, tweets, and emails in the fantasy feedback segment later on in the show Thanks to uh, our audio engineer and my best friend, Bryce, and Rob, our producer and mutual friend, who I'm going to let you behind the curtain right now. So the equipment that I bring to Kentucky every year, I only bring it out once a year. And um, for whatever reason, I have all the equipment except for one cord. And that one cord allows the guests, or co-host in this case, to sit right next to me. I can't. I don't have that cord tonight, so I don't know where it is. I don't know what happened to it last year. I may have left it in the in the ballroom here at Caesar Southern Indiana last year. Um, but in any event, we are still going to have guests on the program tonight. It's just going to be we're basically covering a lot of water, as fishermen like to say. So I want to bring on our first guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You know him from uh, from last year's show. And uh, I want to bring him on right now. He is a winner of numerous KFFSC main event and ancillary leagues and one of the co-hosts of the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship podcast. Please welcome back onto the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, Mr. Rob Fetcher. Rob, welcome in, man. Oh, glad to be here. It's such an exciting weekend here in uh, Louisville for the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship. I'm, I'm excited and uh, looking forward to all the drafts. 
Yeah, I am too. And how weird is doing this show? We can see each other right now, yet we're still dealing with the delay and talking with fantasy because I'm a moron. That's, that's basically what it boils down to. It's Murphy's Law. I mean, trying to come over here, I ran into a train. <laughs> I'm moving. So anything go wrong right now, it, it's everybody. We understand, Balk. Hey, Balk, i got to say, it must be the greatest time in the world to be a Milwaukee sports fan. I know you work up in the sports field oh, up there. Yeah. Come on. A championship. Uh, you know, the, the Packers have been to the NFC title two two years in a row, and now the Brewers are in first place. So. How, and I already said on, on my local show that I do, if, you know, the Bucks obviously already won the title, but if the Brewers win the World Series and the Packers win a Super Bowl, I have one of those fetch. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's like a 1920s male bathing outfit. It's one of those tank top skin tight type, type things. It's got the vertical stripes. Um, I'm wearing one of those and running downtown Appleton. Appleton's not that small. I mean, it's like 60,000, 70,000 people. But I'm running downtown when everybody's out at the bars at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. And I'm running up. It's, it's going to be about a two-mile run in that outfit if Wisconsin is in charge of the Super Bowl champs, the NBA Finals champs, and the World Series champs. And, and there will be plenty of video of that for sure. That, that's great. That that sounds like a that '70s show episode that I've heard or something <laughs> that would happen. Uh, we have, uh, by the way, shout out to Drew Maselli who's here right now. Just brought me my first Woodford Reserve of the weekend. Uh, former FFPC High Stakes League champ, football guys uh, champ, FFPC main event league champ. Um, so I'm going to be enjoying a Woodford while we do the program tonight. Coming up on tonight's show, we're going to tell you how to handle Dak Prescott and the rest of the Cowboys and drafts. We're going to talk about how the Sony Michelle trade is going to affect Daryl Henderson's fantasy output. Plus, uh, Danny Miller coming up in a little bit. And, of course, uh, Adam Krautwurst, the uh, Draft Sharks uh, Deep End Fantasy Football Podcast uh, co-host, coming up uh, to close out the show. And we're going to reveal the hype guy to you, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. Um, which is always a fun time. So let's get into it, Fetch, here. Uh, well, first of all, if, if you're not aware, um, the FFPC main event, you can get $400 off each additional team, whether it's live or online right now. The Football Guys Players Championship, filling a dozen-plus drafts a, uh, a day for those. First place for five is $500,000, 100K for second. The inaugural Best Ball Tourney is launched, $50,000 grand prize, only $125 entry fee. Those are popping off. Dynasty Startups, the slow drafts close out this weekend, but we already do have live drafts in the lobby at myffpc.com. And don't forget about the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship main event. Drafts going off um, all weekend, actually, not just live here in, uh, in Louisville, but online as well. So make sure you're checking those out. All right, Fetch, Jameis Winston, let's talk about him a little bit here. He is getting significant locker room support for the Saints starting quarterback job. We found out from Adam Schefter today that he reportedly has earned it. And um, it, it sounds like he is going to be the guy, the majority, the lion's share of the snaps at quarterback with Taysom Hill rotating in. Um, it, he's going to be tossing to Marquez Callaway. He's going to be tossing to Adam Troutman, Juwan Johnson, Alvin Kamara, all those guys there. Sounds like he's going to be out there week one in New Orleans against the Packers. So now that we know this fetch, how do you treat Jameis Winston and how is this affecting how you're drafting the rest of the Saints? I think this is good for all the uh, receivers and tight ends. Um, he's one of only eight players to ever throw for 5,000 yards, and this is a you know, long history of uh, NFL football. And his coach has the one guy who's done it multiple times, or in the past has done it multiple times, and Drew Brees. So we know this is a great um, passing offense. I couldn't believe he was going undrafted uh, lately. Why not take a 20-round flyer? our late round flyer. Right. I and mean, I would definitely take him as my QB two this weekend. Um, let's move on and, and talk a little bit about, and by the way, I totally agree with it. And, and, I, and I'll, I, you feel free to disagree with me on this fetch, but I think there's going to be people who wait on quarterback this weekend and they'll draft Jameis Winston in like the 14th or 15th round as their starter. Oh, you could. I mean, Taysom Hill's going to enough away from him that it may scare you a little but even Drew Brees last year, when he was healthy, um, averaged two touchdowns uh, throwing a game, even when Taysom Hill was already taking that red zone snaps away that everybody fears so much. Um, I do want to let's, – let's keep the focus on um, the NFC here, but let's move on um, to the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Gerald Everett is becoming a favorite target uh, for Russell Wilson, according to the Seattle Times. 
Russell Wilson says that he's super elusive and he keeps getting open. He's keeping uh, finding on ways to, to make plays. Um, and Everett, obviously, he's not going to take the line share of targets away from DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockwood, who, by the way, caught 100-plus passes last year. But you look at um, how Russell Wilson has treated the tight end in that offense. He loves throwing to the tight end down the seam. Shane Waldron is the new offensive coordinator in there. Certainly things are working in Gerald Everett's favor. If we look at where he is being drafted in the FFPC, and quite frankly, this transfers over to the KFFSC, tight end 16 fetch. You on board with tight end 16 Gerald Everett based on the upside? That's about where I want to take him. I do not want to go much higher than that. The reason is um, he reminds me of a former St. Louis Ram uh, tight end in Jared Cook. Man, he looks the part all the time. He looks like he would be great, and he has these great games, and then he kind of just goes away. And with the, the target share that Lockett and DK Metcalf take away, and the fact that we know with Pete Carroll there, he never lets Russell Cook. Everybody wants to let Russell Cook, but late <laughs> in the year, it seems like he takes away. So I'm just a little worried about Everett as, as moving up into a tight end one. I, I, I would love him in a best ball league because he's going to have a couple great games, but I worry about that consistency. I think you could find a more consistent guy in a Gasecki or something in that area. Um, so you like Kaseki better than Everett then, obviously, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. All right. I, and I'm on board with that. Um, a guy um, I, I that I just – um, just... Right. Um, no, I get it. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, Cortland Sutton here because, quite frankly, Fetch, it's on you to – to help me make up my mind about this guy. I haven't decided yet. I have so many shares of him in Dynasty that I think it's clouding me a little bit. But Cortland Sutton is, according to the Denver Post, not going to be on a snap count for week one. Sutton says he's going to play as much as the Broncos allow him to play. He just says he doesn't plan on playing only 20 or 30 plays. He's going to make his preseason debut this weekend, which so we'll get to see him out there with newly anointed quarterback Teddy Bridgewater if the Broncos decide to play Bridgewater. But he, as we look at Fantasy Mojo, and shout-out to Darren Armani for all the great ADP that we get from him, according to, uh, to the last three days in the Football Guys Players' Championship, Cortland Sutton, 708 as wide receiver 37. Fetch, he's not going off the board as a top three, like a, like a, a, a wide receiver three. He's going off as a wide receiver four. Does that make sense to you? Is he being undervalued at this point? I do not think he's undervalued. I, I was so high on Cortland Sutton last year coming off that 1,100-yard season. He, he, he's a great athlete. The thing that worries me is they have basically drafted two first-round talents the last two years as pass catchers in Jerry Judy and Noah Fant. And I think that puts Cortland Sutton down the pecking order of the offense. Also, success came with very strong arm on quarterbacks. Uh, the first half of 2019, when he was so successful, Joe Flacco was the quarterback, who's a big-armed guy. Being here in Louisville, I know Teddy great. And Teddy is a solid quarterback, very consistent. But he is more accuracy. He's looking for the underneath stuff, the guys in the middle, which look, you know, takes me towards Judy and Fance, more so than Cortland Sutton, who's going to be catching balls out on the sidelines and deep down the field. He is much better to me with – a strong arm guy that can really get the ball downfield. Uh, again, good value at that 39 right off the edge of a wide receiver three, but I wouldn't reach much higher, and I wouldn't want to pencil him into my lineup every week. So does that mean you're on Team Judy for the Broncos receivers this oh, year? I'm, yeah, we're, 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 I, I saw a list of the hype guys. I'm very much on Jerry Judy. I think this, this could be okay. his second well, year don't big time it. breakout. <laughs> Don't spoil it. We're, we're going to get to Judy in a little bit then. Um, all right, let's move on and, and talk about Daryl Henderson. Um, Sean McVay says that even though they made this trade with, with the Patriots or Sony Michelle, that Henderson's going to have a very big role. Uh, this according to Andrew Siciliano on Twitter. Um, Sean McVay said that um, the, despite the trade, the outlook for Henderson has not changed. This is a player that they said was not going to play in the preseason. They weren't going to put him out there, yet they still let him practice, and he sprained a thumb. That's a different story for a different day. But the issue here is how, how do we sort of 
put our fingers on how much of a workload is Henderson going to get? How much of a workload is Michelle going to get? Because they're both going to factor into this offense. Now, this is good news that, that Sean McVay is saying that Henderson is, is going to be big, um, but how much of a share is Henderson going to have? Fetch, when you look at this, is it a 60-40 split? Is it a 70-30 split? Is it a 50-50 split? And then uh, talk a little bit about who you think the right guy to own as far as pass catching goes between Henderson and Michelle. As far as the PPR, you're going to want Daryl Henderson. Sony Michelle, even though I thought he was great in college out of the backfield catching the ball, was not used that way in New England, and he's perceived as more of an inside runner. As a, the Rams have done the last few years, they're a one-step cut type running team. That's the reason they like Cam Akers. They want a guy that's going to hit the hole. They kind of had this weird fascination with occasionally playing Malcolm Brown because of the same thing. They, they want that inside hit to cut. That's why I'm down on Henderson. I, I don't think he fits this offense as well, and especially with Stafford, because I don't think there's going to be much checking down. I, I think Sean McVay has said, I'm tired of quarterbacks that aren't sure what they're doing and I have to call the plays and the checks. He went out and got Stafford so he can – get the ball down the field. I mean, they drafted Tutu Atwell. They signed Deshaun Jackson. What do those two guys do? They're fast. They're going to get down the field. you got two possession guys kind of in Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. I expect a lot of passing. And when they get down the red zone, they're going to use Sony Michelle, not Daryl Henderson. So I don't mm. see the upside Daryl uh, Henderson, and especially as high as he was going last week. I know this trade will bring his volume down, but I'm staying away from Daryl Henderson. Fetch, you're killing me. I just did a Kentucky main event here, um, and I took Henderson at the at the six. I believe it was the six oh five. Did I overpay for him? Six oh five. I think so. Yes, I, I honestly think oh, so. Uh, Sean McVay likes that power guy, and I, I, the touchdowns up there. You you need him to catch eighty balls, and I don't think he'll do that. All right. So as long as we're talking about um, Rams here. What about Woods and Cup? Are you is, is Rob Fetcher going to be drafting more Robert Woods this weekend, or is he going to be drafting more Cooper Cup this weekend, given that they're not too far away from each other as far as ADP goes? I will take either one that I can get. I mean, Woods will come first, but it, it's so close. So you have um, no pre- that, you, that Okay, either. so you have no sig- you have no significant preference. I mean, gun to your head, you're going to take Woods, but you'll probably end up with shares of, a, you know, about the same amount of shares of both of them. Exactly, yes. And I'll try to get Stafford. Got it. I think this passing game, I, I think McVay, that's what he wants to do. He wants to show off that young boy genius rep that he got a couple of years and they kind of got away from it <laughs> as he couldn't trust golf in this offense. So. Um, okay, Fetch, it is, it is about that time here. We are going to – Danny Miller is going to come up any second here, the former – the 2018 Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship main event co-champion. But I want to get your input on the hype guy vote. Now, just as a bit of background for anybody who is not familiar with this, originally when Dave Gerzak and I started this podcast, the whole idea – or not the whole idea, but the, the last episode we always do, we'd always announce the ascendant of which player – when it comes to Kentucky, when it comes to Vegas, which player was going to be ascending multiple rounds up the draft board. We don't really see that anymore, and we haven't seen it in years, which is why we switched it to the hype guy. The hype guy is a guy who is going to get a lot of buzz, not only in Kentucky, but in Las Vegas or the FFPC, and a player that is is going to not necessarily move up several rounds, but people will start drafting maybe a round earlier than they normally do to beat the other players to try to get to them. So this year's candidates are uh, running back Antonio Gibson from the WFT, Jerry Judy, who you already mentioned. I'm sure he's going to get a vote here from you. C.D. Lamb, who's obviously getting the hard knocks bump. Kyle Pitts uh, for the Atlanta Falcons, who obviously in, in tight end premium scoring leagues like the FFPC is getting a lot of love. And then Javante Williams, the running back uh, for Denver. So, Fetch, what I need from you is I need you to, to give me your, your – First place vote out of this list of five and your second place vote out of this list of five between Gibson, Judy, Lamb, Pitts, and Williams. Is it safe to say that Judy is your number one pick here? Judy is definitely my number one. Yes. I think there's a lot of hype and he's going to go up boards and I think he's going to have a great year. 
Um, if there was a second guy on this list that you could vote after Fetch or after Fetch, Fetch is always the hype guy in the show, by the way. If you could but, vote <laughs> after Jerry Judy, who would it be? It would be Antonio Gibson. And, and the biggest reason is that, that talk about could he be K- Christian McCaffrey in this offense? And anytime you can think about being an R- the RB1 and, and scoring the most points, rushing, receiving, I think Gibson's got to be up there, even though he's already late first round, early second. All right, so Fetch, give us the lay of the land here, what you're doing this weekend uh, in Kentucky. You're doing a bunch of main events. What was the draft that you were just doing now? Is that a, a keeper league that you were participating in? It, it's the original keeper league that Farrell started about 12 years ago, since I, I was one of the first guys in there. I'd been in the KFFC for the 20 years since it's been around. Uh, I got in on that and just got done doing a keeper league. I'm going to do a big payback, I think, Sunday night. I don't know if you're in that one, but I know – a lot of the guys that stick around are, are in that at 4.30 on Sunday and uh, four or five main events. So it's a, it's a long but fun weekend. I'm ready for it. Wait, hold on. You're doing a big payback on Sunday night? Well, Sunday afternoon. It, it'll be night. 4.30. 4:30 oh, Sunday afternoon. Oh, because that's, that's the big crowning, the crowning event of the Kentucky fantasy football. That's the one where everybody, where Farrell gets me to go up there and, and, and make an ass of myself impersonating all these people. And I hate doing it every year. And every year I get roped into doing an impersonation of him. Of course, uh, our good buddy, Dr. Harwood, uh, John Duckworth. You say you'll be in that draft uh, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, I, yeah, I think he has two of them. So I don't know which one I'm going to be in, but I, I will be. Oh, you'll be in one I of them. Okay, to look I got it. Per- yeah. And if you'd like, I'd go ahead and buy that bathing suit for you if you want to try out your test run for uh, <laughs> later in the year. That is not going to happen. That is not going to happen, um, at least not this weekend. Maybe next – I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll do it. If I win – if I somehow win the main event in Kentucky this year, I will gladly show up Saturday night to the main event in 2022 wearing uh, said bathing suit. Um, okay, in order to win the Kentucky uh, Fantasy Football State Championship main event, uh, Fetch, you got to be dialed in to um, the, the value and the players and the way the draft is going. Now, for the first time ever, um, normally when I do these drafts, normally I, my first event is always the auction on Friday night. For the first time ever, I did a main event right before this show and never done that before. So now I'm getting an actual I, – I, I dipped my toes into the pool and I have an actual Kentucky main event to talk about here. Um, on the show. I don't know if you saw the board, but here's my takeaways. Um, And I guess this is not breaking news. This is not something anybody should be shocked about. Um, But the running backs fell. There is uh, a significant emphasis on drafting receivers early. Um, The um, uh, tight ends fell. Uh, You you could get pretty good, decent value on, on tight ends. Um, and I, I, for, I drafted Dak Prescott, I think in like the eighth round, I never drafted a quarterback that early, but Fetch, the, the value was so good there. I feel like because receivers are so deep this year, I might end up letting the receivers fall and, and, you know, come, you know, let them come to me as it were. I think my starting four receivers in this league were at Mike Evans, um, T Higgins, Juju Smith, Schuster, and Brandon cooks, which I can live with since I got Ezekiel Elliott and Jonathan Taylor in the first two rounds. Your thoughts on your strategy this weekend. Are you also going to target receivers early, or are you going to let them fall and, and target the other positions early? You know, so early, I started drafting in the spring, and I think our conservative nature, since we don't know what's going on, I think all the seasons start out so heavy with running backs. And especially here in Kentucky, playing the three wide receivers we get closer to the August main event, closer to the season start, you see the receivers flying up the board. And I think you kind of have to zig when other people zag when they start to do that with uh, the running back. Uh, Hearing you getting Jonathan Mm -hmm. Taylor with Zeke, I think that's a great setup. Uh, People are sleeping on Jonathan because they're worried about uh, Quentin Nelson and Carson Wentz, but I think they're going to be healthy. And Jonathan Taylor showed he could be, an alpha dog in that backfield. I see. And I didn't want to do it either because here's one. And I don't know if you've ever been like this in a Kentucky draft before, but I, I, I was drafting fifth 
and I see the way the board's falling to me coming back in the second round. And I see all these receivers going, and I'm like, oh, dang it, Jonathan Taylor is going to be there for me. I just know it at 208. Now what do I do? Because I can either, you know, scoop one of these receivers up um, and, and grab, grab one of those, or I can grab what could be like a, a top five running back in Jonathan Taylor this year. And so what I did do is I took Taylor, but then it cost me a shot at a top 12 receiver. Um, but for you, you would say that um, that is the smart decision to try to fill in receiver later and then go with, uh, with, with Taylor there. If all those top receivers are yes, because you can get guys like Jerry Judy who could very easily at least be a top 15 guy that you're going to get now in the fifth or sixth round. And there's other receivers. I mean, Corey Davis with this um, repertoire, he kind of this rapport he has with Zach Wilson could be a high flyer that you could get later in, in the draft. Everybody's excited about Marquise Callaway in New Orleans, and we talked about Jameis Winston. So there's guys out there that you could get that can can be wide receivers two and three that you can get late enough that, that it makes that value of running back worth it early. Rob, um, when's the next Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship podcast coming out that we will be able to hear your dulcet tones on? Do you know yet? I do not. This is a busy time for Farrell, so I don't know if we'll get one <laughs> exactly, before week yeah. one. But and, and he's got to go to you know Vegas out for the for the FFPC. But we're hoping to start doing them regularly through the week, starting uh, between week one and week two and give uh, fantasy advice for your lineups every week. Uh, it's a fun thing to do. I know you do it with Farrell. He's a very interesting fellow, the most interesting man yes, in the world, I like to call him. So <laughs> we have fun on our podcast, <laughs> yeah. and we ju- just enjoy talking football. Well, I listen, I have fun talking football with you. I plan on having fun uh, all weekend, and I'm sure you and I will talk shop uh, as the weekend goes on. Fetch, I can't thank you enough for being a part of the show uh, tonight. I'll let you get back to uh, the uh, the Dynasty Keeper League you're in, and uh, we'll hook up again this weekend, uh, share a beer, and, and talk about why Jonathan Taylor is a great second-round pick. All right, good luck this weekend, Balky. Thank you, Fetch. That's Rob Fetcher, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he of a uh, champion of many, many ancillary and main event leagues here in the KFFSC. He hosts the KFFSC podcast as well. You can check that out wherever you get podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring in tonight's second guest he is the 2018 co-champ of the kentucky fantasy football state championship and uh, i don't even know how many i mean it's not even dozens it's got to be hundreds of leagues now that he has won in the ffpc be the best ball football guys ffpc main event it is the one the only you follow him on twitter at danny mueller one danny mueller welcome to the program man hello balky how are you doing um so you Doing good, doing good. You saw the um, you saw the draft that I did earlier. You were kind of paying attention to, to to the draft. Did anything stand out to you in that draft at all, or was it kind of what you expected? You know, receivers falling, but but or I beg your pardon, running backs falling, quarterbacks falling, tight ends falling, receivers being targeted early. Is that just the name of the game in Kentucky every single year? The wide receiver arms race. Well, pretty much, but you know, I've I looked at boards all through coming up to this contest and I did a, a, a online one the other night and I watched looked at the boards here and everybody it's like wide receivers are like it reminds me of the toilet paper shortage in 2020 everybody's running the store <laughs> by a wide receiver so That's and, true. The, That's and, very the, true. and the shelf and the shelves are the shelves are bare and they don't know what to do and uh, <laughs> it's just kind of it's just kind of typical. I mean, it's uh, other type leagues aren't like this. I mean, they may be wide receiver heavy, but not like this. And you feel like you got to draft four receivers, and you draft your three, and you look at the board and go, "Gosh, the next best receiver I have to reach a round and a half to get. What should I should I yeah. do it?" So so you really to me it's like you got to stay disciplined to go, well, maybe I should just go ahead and get a running back as a flex. You know, I usually like to have a receiver and a flex, but, hey, if you're – you're because the running backs are falling. So you could get a yeah. – it could work It could work wonderful with a, a running back as your flex because you're maybe going up a 
what in a normal draft would be an eight, a number six receiver that doesn't score that many points. So you know you, you can you can draft tight ends and go to quarterbacks and just exploit other uh, things in the draft, and that's what you just got to do. And they, I, I don't know, you know if, y'all. I I, I don't know. I, what it is, but like I, I did this first draft. I was just telling Fetch um, before you popped on that um, normally I don't do a draft before the show. Normally I, I do the show first and then we do the auction and, and, and we, you know, the weekend is off and running. I, Danny, does this make sense? I feel less dialed in now after that first draft than I did you know, before I did any draft this weekend. I guess I feel like a little bit lost. You know, I, I ended up with the fifth pick. I got Ezekiel Elliott there. I'm fine with that. And I was just telling Fetch to too, like, you know, like Jonathan Taylor fell to me and I, I couldn't, I just couldn't pass him up there, even though I knew it was going to cost my receiver core, but I felt like receivers are deep enough. I'd cobble it together. And I, I think I did, but I, I guess the, the question I want to ask you here has, have you ever had that before with as many best balls and main events and football guys drafts that you've done? Do you ever feel like you, you do one and, and you now know less than you did before? Like you feel a little bit lost when a draft is kind of catches you off guard a little bit. Uh, well, that's that's why I do a lot of best balls because it's it's practice. I mean, it's you know you right. you could study draft boards. I think Evan Silva was talking about it on a podcast here the other night, well, and and it's so true that you need to just actually do them. So that way, when you get in those those decision points where you got to change strategies or or do something different, you've been there before and you kind of know what to do, and so it's and for here we ha we haven't been drafting Kentuckys until now, so that's a natural feeling but tomorrow right. and the day yep. after we're gonna get the hang of it and that's when we'll cobble out our better teams. At least uh, hopefully. And when it yeah, comes to drafts you, you and I are in the I, same I, mind I, there. Uh seems like every draft I do I leave disappointed. <laughs> so, <laughs> like we did the pros versus Joe's, and I was so upset that somebody sniped me in the ninth, in the seventeenth round, and it just destroyed right. my draft in my mind because I got sniped in the seventeenth round. Then I come to my senses the next morning. And go, it's the seventeenth round, Danny. <laughs> uh, so you just got to shake you know, it off. You got to shake it off. You got to shake it off, and, and uh, it's you never know. You know, it's it's funny we. Uh, Scott and Jay and I were talking. You know, it's, uh, Scott compared it to blackjack, and I com- I compare it to poker. Right. We're making bets on players, and sometimes your bets win, and sometimes they lose. And let's, hopefully, we make talk- good enough bets. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I, we're talking about placing bets on players. Let's talk about some of the players here because I think. You know, similar to the point I was just making where I do a draft, I feel like I know less. I feel like as this preseason is getting deeper, I'm, I'm knowing less about what's going on. Start in San Francisco. Jennifer Lee Chan on Twitter said that Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo, Garoppolo alternated reps with the first-team offense this week. And this is after that Shanahan had already said that Garoppolo is the week one starter. But Trey Lance was working with the ones in the red zone drills. Garoppolo was working with the twos. Trey Lance was the guy that the 49ers gave up all that draft capital to select, not Jimmy Garoppolo. So when you look at from the standpoint of uh, Trey Lance as the talent, he's got the draft pedigree, he's the, the, the brand new thing in San Francisco, how do you treat a player like that in drafts, Kentucky or FFPC, how do you treat a player like that when it seems like all the, the signs are pointing to him being the guy except for the head coach saying that Jimmy Garoppolo is actually the starter there? How are you handling him in drafts this weekend? Well, Trey Lance, he has been rising up boards. I've seen him going to the 10th round, and I've seen people draft him as a starting quarterback. And then they'll back him up with somebody like Kirk Cousins until he takes off. Right. That's the bet they're placing, that that Lance is going to eventually take over. Now it might be taking over sooner than they think. So, you know, you got to evaluate how you're going to hedge your bet on that. And I admit, I've, I've drafted a bunch of teams that I had Lance. I drafted him as a back, I, you know, like a, a redraft. I may not draft a backup quarterback that 
early, but I would move him up because he, he, if I if I win that bet, he might be a, a top six quarterback. So you know, I've, I've actually done that before in drafts, and I know I've seen others do it. And Justin Fields is another one they're doing it with. So, and that's kind of unusual yep. for quarterbacks because this is an excellent rookie class for quarterbacks. And I'm beginning to wonder if Zach Wilson might be the guy. <laughs> I had he the sure same thought good. as you. Same thought as you. Yeah. He he and and I watched him against against the Packers, and I know he's picking up some steam. Aaron Rodgers said he was pretty impressed with him. I almost drafted him as my backup quarterback in that main event I just did, but I ended up because I got Prescott in the eighth. I'm like, ah, I'll just you know forget about a backup quarterback. But he might have been the guy uh, if I would have done that. Speaking of rookies, Danny. Paul Daner Jr., who covers the Cincinnati Bengals for The Athletic, said that while all the talk has been about Jamar Chase having all these drops in preseason games and in practice, this past week, it's been fantastic for Jamar Chase. In fact, it was four straight impressive practices for the Bengals' rookie receiver this year. Um, Some people were even saying he was going to lose snaps to Auden Tate out of Florida State, by the way. But um, Jamar Chase, you, you think about him. Obviously a great prospect, still a rookie. And not only a rookie this season, he opted out of, of last season, too. Um, you, you think about where Justin Jefferson was at LSU a year ago, playing behind Ola B.C. Johnson. Jamar Chase certainly is in danger of not leading, uh, living up to that hype. Your thoughts on Jamar Chase this weekend, given he is the brand-new shiny toy, he is the untapped potential, we don't know what his ceiling is. How are you handling not only him in drafts, but what about his teammate T. Higgins in Kentucky drafts this weekend? Uh, well, I kind of have to play that by ear. The, the the thing with Chase is, you know, he is a talent, and he was going before Higgins in drafts for quite a while. Uh, probably, I think I've read that his highest had the highest ADP of any rookie receiver in history. And we all, I remember, we thinking C. D. Lamb was being drafted pretty highly in the, like the sixth round last year, the seventh round. And Chase was going sometimes in the fourth. And then he started performing bad, and he started dropping down boards. and probably started dropping probably where he's the best place to place to bet. <laughs> and now this news, you know, how's that going to affect? And it would be nice if we seen some drafts so we could kind of see what people are doing with him and, we're going to find out firsthand right here in Kentucky. So. Yeah, so I'm curious. I'm curious about and, that. And, yeah, no, you and me both. And and I did take. Hig- I had the chance at Higgins or Chase. I ended up going with Higgins over him. And and we'll we will see if that uh, proves to be um, the correct decision. But I, I think you're right. We will see as the weekend goes on how Chase is being handled by everybody in these drafts. All right, I want to I, I want to talk about uh, Saquon Barkley with you, man, because um, people are going to live and die by this guy this season, given where he's going. According to Fantasy Mojo right now, in the main event um, over the last two days um, for the FFPC, Saquon Barkley is currently running back eight, going at the two o one right now, um, and he uh, is is a player that certainly was going as a top three, top four player earlier in the season, and now he is going in the second round. So you look at him knowing that he took live reps today, knowing that Jordan Renan said that, who covers the the Giants for for ESPN, saying that he looked natural, saying he felt good despite having the no contact jersey on. Danny, this could be a, this could be the guy this year. He could be the guy, like if you avoid him Mm -hmm. and he, and he, um, he peters out, you were right. And you could, you could be great. But if you avoid him and he crushes it and looks like a top three or top four pick, Mm -hmm. That's the type of guy that can make your season. How are you handling Saquon Barkley? Uh, well, actually, that's pretty much mirrors my belief in him. Belief in him. Uh, it's like it's great to see him dip to the second round because what what running uh, and I'm just repeating what others have said, but I, be, I believe it when I heard it. Right. Is what other running back can you draft that might have Christian McCaffrey type of the year? And it's Saquon. He may start off slow, but when it counts toward the end, when you're in the playoffs and everything, he might be blowing up like Christian McCaffrey. So to get him in the second round, that's a steal. 
And I, I would love it if he, you know, if I'm at the end of the board and I draft a receiver like in Kentucky, which you need to because everybody, you know, it's a, a paper, uh, it's a toilet paper crisis of 2020 with receivers. Uh, <laughs> you know, you draft a receiver and then Barkley falls to you in the second. I mean, hey, hey I'm jumping up and happy about that because they're I've taken a, a, a bet that might pay off big. With a little bit of risk to it, so right. I like it that he's in the second. I hope he makes it to the mid second, and I'm sitting in the middle of the board and <laughs> with Tyreek Hill well, and, and, and Barkley and, there. Oh God, can you imagine that? Like, what if Barkley? What if people start taking? They're going to take Taylor and Harris and Gibson and Chubb over him, and all of a sudden Barkley is like a two hundred seven, two hundred eight type guy. That could be very interesting this weekend. Just one of the major stories we'll be following as you and I both draft our teams as best as we can here in Louisville. All right, Danny, final question for you. It's the hype guy time. We're looking for the guy that you think is going to be hyped up, not necessarily making a two to three round ADP jump, but a guy that people will be beating, trying to beat their competitors to, to draft before their competitors have the chance. So maybe taking them around early. Uh, This year's candidates, Antonio Gibson for the Washington football team, Jerry Judy out in Denver, Uh, CeeDee Lamb down in Dallas, Kyle Pitts, the uh, rookie tight end for Atlanta, and Javante Williams, the running back in Denver. Uh, Danny, if there is a, I'm going to ask you to pick two players here, your, your number one choice and your number two choice for the hype guys, the guys that FFPC and KFFSC players will be hyping up to no end over these next few weeks. And you don't have Ramondre Stevenson on that list? He's not on there He's because I don't feel he will make the impact. <laughs> He, he won't have the impact well, that these other five the guys. Do. Now round. I think he's good. now he's and, and and yeah, he will have no problem jumping up multiple rounds. I have no. In fact, if you look at the main event over the last couple of he, days, he Andre has. Stevenson. I'll tell you right now. He, yeah, he has. He's in the twelfth round now. Not in the seventeenth anymore. He's in the twelfth round as running back fifty, and he's going to go higher, no yeah. question, obviously. But as we move forward here, if I pin it down to those five players, who are your who's your number one choice and who's your number two choice, Danny? Well, probably Jerry Judy is the first choice, and it could was just as well be the second choice, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb's already moving up. And I, I don't know mm-hmm. if that may just continue him moving further up the board. But Judy's starting to get a lot of pub, and, you know, this news that came out that uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater's going to be the starter and, I remember listening to Audible and Cecil Landy talks about the great connection between Bridgewater and Judy, and it's Bridgewater's a quarterback, Judy going to blow up, and, and uh, they're starting to publicize him. And one side picking is a breakout player. And that's all just happened in the last few days. You know, there's a lot of things that have happened in the last few right. days that we're all trying to sort out. <laughs> so that that would be my choice. That's true. So Judy would be one for you, and C.D. Lamb would be your second choice. Yeah. And All it right. Could be well, and, and of course, uh, you're yeah. right. So it's very, very close for you, is, is what you're saying. And mm-hmm. um, I, yeah. I plan on talking with you um, much more about this topic and many other topics this weekend here in Louisville. Um, I'm going to let you go. We got our final guest coming up, Danny. Uh, Mueller, ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 KFFC Main Event Champ. You follow him on Twitter at Danny Mueller one Danny, thanks so much for hopping aboard, and we will talk to you again shortly here, man. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Danny Mueller, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopping aboard on the uh, High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour podcast. Let's get to our final guest for the night, uh, a former guest of this program, a former guest, guest of the Road of His High Stakes Lowdown. He's got his own podcast out there, the Deep End Fantasy Football Podcast that he co-hosts with Mike Shope. It is Adam Krautwurst. And Adam, it, let, just I know you have a ton of accolades winning a, a ton of FFPC uh, leagues over the years. Fourth place in the main event, right? This was like three, two years ago? Two or three years ago you were fourth place overall? So actually two years ago I was fifth place overall. But I, but I was almost Fifth fourth. Okay. So just, I'm not sure if that counts. <laughs> no, it does count. It does count for sure. That's good. And <laughs> and I'm I'm glad to have you. So like uh, I'm glad to have you on tonight because I I am convinced that Mike Shope will never be on my podcast again A- after I have never I have never and I mean, <laughs> not even being hyperbolic here I have never pronounced his name right on the ever ever. 
I, I always butcher it. And I butcher it into, like it's either shop or scop or scope. Like I always screw it up. But now that I've been listening to the Deep End Fantasy Football Podcast, I feel like I'm getting better at it. You guys are doing a great job there. Um, not only bringing or, you know, talking about your own experiences with, with the FFPC and in, in high stakes fantasy football, you get a lot of great guests on there too, that, that, you know, some we've had on the show, some we haven't, but really delving into the deep end of high stakes fantasy football, right? Yeah, it's been an absolute blast uh, doing it with Mike. Um, and, you know, thanks to shout out to draft sharks of helping us get a lot of these guests on DraftSharks.com, And it's just been, cause that's what, like, I, that, those are the guys that I want to talk to. Like the analysts are great and all that, but like, I want to talk to the guys making the big bucks. Right. So I want to find out like what they're doing, what their secret is. And sometimes it's hard to kind of, uh, to get the secret to the sauce, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, if you butter them up a little right. bit, sometimes they can, uh, sometimes they'll uh, tell you what they're, what they're thinking. And that's the whole thing is I want to get better. I want the people listening to get better. And what better way than talking to the guys that are making, you know, six figures a year doing it. And that was sort of like the, the inspiration for the high stakes fantasy football hour, you know, a decade ago was like, you know, everybody's yes. got a podcast out there. What about the guys that don't? What about the guys that, exactly. are, that, like you said, are making the big bucks that we never hear from, that we never get their input? And, and now, you know, shows like yours are exposing these guys and um, in a good way and helping us all become fantasy, better fantasy football players, which I know I'm going to need after drafting with you in the main event that we had <laughs> just before this podcast tonight. So we'll, we'll talk about this draft a little bit. Now, they, we, we had a uh, technical difficulty snafu. So we don't have the board right in front of us, Adam, but you were drafting seventh. I was drafting fifth. Can you talk a little bit about, and and this is more, I mean, this doesn't have to be necessarily catered to KFFSC. This could be FFPC or any high stakes league. But when you're buying your draft choice and you get a draft choice like you did at the seven in the middle of the round, what's the strategy there? Because you can go a lot of different ways. How did you um, employ, how did you deploy your strategy in this drafting from the seventh spot? Yeah, so, you know, this is my first draft here this weekend. I'm doing, well, you know how Farrell is. He talked me into some more. So I'm doing, I think I'm doing like nine or oh, ten yeah. drafts out here this weekend, which is just impossible. You're I don't right, know when I'm going to sleep. It. but <laughs> It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It's in, but it's going to be. <laughs> it's insanity. It's insanity. So, you know, I don't really have, I'll, I'll, I'll be drafting from all over the, you know, all over the board this, this weekend. For the first one, you know, for me, in this format, there, there in the first round, there are to me there are seven clear guys that I want, um, and so I just decided, listen, if I'm not going to go one, if I'm not going to go twelve for that third round reversal, I'm just going to go seven, um, get whoever whoever falls to me, and then just kind of build from that. So that was kind of the strategy that, that I had. You know, it's 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 super receiver heavy because you got to start three. So I wanted to get one of those three receivers or one of those kind of my top four running backs. Um, and, uh, and that's just kind of where I started. And I, I, and I really liked kind of the way the board fell, fell to me. Um, so let's wide scope this for a little bit. Um, and this is something I struggle with Adam, when you're drafting these high stakes leagues and, and I'll bring a baseball analogy into this, is your swing pretty short and concise, just trying to make contact in the first few rounds. And then as we get deeper into the draft, your swing gets longer and and longer and bigger and wide sweeping where you're trying to hit home runs is that is that the proper take um for for ffpc years kffs years to to try to make sure that they have a good shot of winning a you know some life-changing money a five or six uh five or six figure grand prize yeah so i think it depends right so like with so we we did a main event tonight but you know the main event in here, it's, it's fun and all that, but it's, you know, 15K, I think, is, this, is the grand prize. Um, to me, that's not, you know, that, that's nothing compared to, like, you know, what, what you guys are doing over the FFPC. Right. So, like, what, what, what I'm saying, is, what I'm, I'm trying to say is that, like, here I'm a little bit more safe, like, short, like you said, kind of short, short swings because, you know, it is a tournament, but it's nowhere near as big as the football guys. It's nowhere near as big as the main event. Um, so, yeah, I am trying to play a little, a little, a little bit safe, right? I, t- I took Tyreek Hill at the 1-7, right? I think it's an absolute, you know, smash pick every, every, every time in these leagues where you got to draft three receivers. But in like, you know, but in other drafts like here where we've got the big paybacks, those are, you know, $1,000 entries. They're, they're, they're leagues within themselves. There's no tournament. 
So it knows I'm, I'm going to continue to be super, not super safe, but I'm not going to be worried about like taking that huge um, kind of swing for the fence guy. Cause you're, there's no, you know, you're not competing with, you know, 10,000 people to try to win a half a million dollars. Right. right. I just got to beat out 11. Other, I just got to beat out 11 other guys. So, you know, maybe in the main event or football guys, I might take a swing at Justin Fields um, because I, you know, I, I think he has massive upside where, but in one of these thousand dollar leagues, maybe I'm just playing a little bit safer, maybe take like a Tom Brady. Cause I don't have to worry about again, putting up a monster week every week. I just have to beat a little 11 other guys. Adam, you talk, you mentioned um, Justin Fields. Um, it, it, uh, who would be a mid-round swing for defensive type pick. What about at a different position? If, if I bring up running back or if I bring up receiver or if I bring up tight end, not necessarily just KFFC, but FFPC, who's, who's another pick that you, you're going to be targeting uh, you know, going into these last couple of weeks where, like, you know, this guy's probably not going to hit, but if he does, I am going to really be separating myself from the field here. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. And the ADP on guys this time of year just absolutely is all over the place. And it, it can change in an instant, hey, right? Yes, so, like, you know, Corey Davis was a guy that I would have answered that question, you know, two days ago, a week ago, uh, as a kind of a swing for the fences guy. He went, what did he go in, like, the seventh or eighth round in the big, in the, in the main event we just did? Like, yeah. uh, you yep. know, guys are flying up the board. Um, and I hate to sound cliche, but, you know, Nicole Hardman is one of those guys. He's one of those swing for the fences type guys. Mike Williams. I know he's not later rounds, but you know, in the in the um, KFFC, you know, by the time you get to Mike Williams, you're 40 receivers deep. You know what I mean? So it's guys like that. Granted, it's it's the eighth ninth round, but it's guys like that where they have kind of that massive upside. Um, a guy that I was kind of taking all summer was Ramondre Stevenson. You know, um, and now he's uh, probably going to move up a little, a little bit. Maybe he has a, sh- a chance at that uh, at that role, or at least he's he's the handcuff there. So I'm I'm still kind of trying to find. Uh, I'm trying to kind of re recalibrate. You know, when you start drafting these football guys in May, you're constantly recalibrating your ADP, you're recalibrating your mindset on every situation. You know, preseason games and stuff like that. So this kind of this week here, you know, it being its kind of own competition in Kentucky. Um, I'm kind of recalibrating to kind of this format and kind of it was this was good to get my feet wet here in this first draft to kind of see where because uh, a lot of these guys, you know, we're going to be drafting all together all, all weekend long. So uh, right. kind of see what people's views are on players. And uh, and, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what type, of, what type of stabs guys start to take. You know, Danny Miller mentioned um, Ramondre Stevenson as well as, as a potential hype guy, which I'm going to ask about you. Uh, I'm going to ask about with you in a second. But just um, when you talk about um, drafting early, right, and you got all these shares with, uh, with Stevenson, um, how do you treat that going forward uh, now that we know that Sony Michelle is in L.A. and it seems like Steve- Stevenson is the 1B in New England right now? Do you just sort of now ignore that in drafts because the value on him, the draft capital that you have to invest in him is so much higher? You just kind of like, ah, you know, it, 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 he's going to be good, but I'm not willing to pay that price because I already got him at this price in the same contest. Do you sort of ignore him and go a different way? Is that the right take to do? Because you know, like, I always wonder how high-volume players treat situations like this as they move forward through drafting season because you can still like a player, but then all of a sudden not like the spot where he's going at. Yeah, that's a super interesting question, and it really depends on what format you're talking about, right? So if it's like the football guys, right, where I've been drafting since May, and Ramondre was, I was getting him in the 15th round since May, and maybe let's say now he's moved up to the 10th, 10th round, I'm probably if I think he's a 10th round type player, I'll probably fade him. If I think he's a fifth round type player, which I don't, but if I did, I would probably continue to take him because I think he's is is a huge value now. Here in Kentucky, and even kind of to speak to the main events, the main events, I don't know how, how many, how, what the percentage is of main events that we're through so far in this, in this offseason, but uh, especially here in Kentucky, this is a brand new tournament, right? So, like, Ramondre Stevenson is going where he's, he's going, and there's no advantage to disadvantage to taking him, you know, earlier or later because no one else has him, right? We're, we are creating the right. ADP yep. as we speak. 
So um, if I think he's worth the 10th round pick, I will take him. I would say if I think he's worth the 12th, I'll take him. And that goes with every player. So, and that's what's neat about this, this Kentucky tournament is it's, it's a whole, it's a brand new tournament that starts kind of, you know, for most people, this is, this is normal drafting season. For me, it's like late, you know, so it's like, it kind of is fresh. Right. It's a new yep. tournament here, kind of, kind of heading into before Vegas on uh, the main events and all that. And it's, it kind of gives you an opportunity to take those guys that, you know, you were talking about maybe like the Daryl Hendersons, right? So they were going in the 11th round and then Akers goes down and that was going in the fourth round. Well, I can't take him in the fourth once I had him in the 11th, but now we have a new tournament. So now I can take Daryl Henderson wherever the heck I want. So uh, yeah, exactly. that's, that's kind of what's yeah. cool about, about, about this Kentucky tournament. All right. So two last questions here, Adam. Uh, first, number one, I, I do want to ask you about Kenny Galladay because I believe, I want to say you took him as your number four receiver. Or was he number your, I did. your number five receiver yep. in the main event tonight? Four. Yep. Number four. Okay. All right. So number he has four, not yeah. practiced yet. As, as far as I know, uh, um, he has not practiced uh, yet after he went down about three weeks ago with a soft tissue injury. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with him this year. He had the hip injury last year with Detroit, but you can point to, well, Detroit wasn't going anywhere. Maybe Galladay didn't want to push himself to get back. Um, I'm kind of curious, and, and as we look at to, to the fantasy mojo right now, in the FFPC main event over the last couple of days, wide receiver 32 at the 6'10". So you look at um, where Galladay is going. You look at where you got him tonight. What are you expecting from him in 2021? <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I don't have a, you know, I I have like zero Galladay up until like the last week or so. I just, my thing <laughs> is when he's healthy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, my thing is when he's healthy, he's going to be in an offense where they want him. They clearly want him. They brought him in free agency, and he runs a as much as it's it's inefficient. He runs a great fade route. And they're going to throw fade routes there in New York. And uh, as much as it's it's good or bad or whatever, I, I just I can't get I I get I feel this like Stefan Diggs vibe. Not that Galladay is going to be a you know a, a top three receiver, but I get this vibe where he could come in, he could be the absolute alpha there, and he can just maybe they're just going to pepper him all over the place with targets. Now he's always getting hurt because he's, he's the type of receiver where every catch he lands on, he lands on his head and all that. But I feel like the way he, he's, he's slipping and he's slipping and he's slipping, like he went in a main event last night at the sixth hole. Um, and I was listening to the, to the, not the sixth hole, in the sixth round, and I was listening to the ship chasing guys, and they were just ripping on the dude who took him in the sixth round. I think I got him maybe in the sixth or seventh in this one. And I feel like, you know, you can get him as your wide receiver four. You don't even have to necessarily start him week yeah. one. It gives him time to get back and get healthy, and maybe he smashes a couple weeks. Um, you know, I don't want him. You know, I don't want to draft him as a starting receiver. But you know, in the FFPC, if you can get him as your wide receiver five or something, like if you're going a heavy, heavy receiver build, I think that's fine. Um, I don't. You know, again, I don't. I don't love it, but I could see that. You know, new receiver, new team team wants to pepper him with targets is he's probably clearly the best receiver there um i think there's some certainly some upside to him and i think new york being a dumpster fire kind of puts people off of him but you know if they're playing from behind and he's their best receiver you know he should he, he should smash when he's healthy i think you're right and uh, you know the thing is sometimes the hate goes too far on these guys right and, right and exactly. i'm not a galladay guy i would never profess to be a galladay guy but in the same way i would say I, I would never say, oh, this guy's off my board. I would, I would never say that, that um, I'm absolutely taking a certain player at, you know, every time, right? Um, Galladay I don't like, but there is a, every man has its price, Adam. And I think we found out what his price was for you with Galladay, and I think that was a solid price that you paid. I think I would have done the same thing um, where you invested in him. All right, final question for you tonight before we let you go. I know you got to do a main is, you got a main event coming up in about a half hour, right? It's Kentucky main event? Yes, 8.30, I think, yep. 8.30, okay, all right. All right, so final question, the hype guy. Now, this is a good question to ask you because you're drafting in a lot of different formats. We want to find out which one out of these five players is going to be hyped up the most. The type of guy that people will be falling all over themselves to not necessarily to overdraft, but to make sure that he uh, is, is a member of their team and that nobody else is getting. So maybe you draft them a half round earlier. Maybe you draft them in a round earlier. And maybe this is the, these are the type of guys that continue to go up and up and up as we get closer to the start of the NFL season. The choices this year, and I'm not going to tell you how fetch, and I'm not going to tell you how Danny Mueller voted, um, but I want to get your opinion. <laughs> Antonio Gibson, Jerry Judy, C. 
C.D. Lamb, Kyle Pitts, Javante Williams. That's Gibson, Judy, Lamb, Pitts, and Javante Williams. I need your top choice for the hype guy and your runner-up for the hype guy this year. Yeah, so for me, the top choice out of that would be CeeDee Lamb. In fact, I did it, and on the main event, we just drafted. I took him at the 2-5 as wide receiver, maybe 8 or something, just because I wanted to have, you know, when I'm here all weekend, I want to make sure I get a share or two early of Lamb so I'm not driving myself crazy later in the weekend going, my God, I got I to gotta get him in, you know, at the end of the first just so I get, so I get my shares. But for me, it's CeeDee CD <laughs> Lamb. He has – he has the potential to absolutely – he has the potential to be the, a top three for a fantasy receiver. So um, that's, that, that's me. Judy is the, is the one that, I've, that, that kind of across the board is just flying up, up draft boards. I mean, I think – did he go in the fourth round in the main that we, we just did? I think, you know – He did, uh, yeah. Or, or, it, was, it was high. Yeah. It was very high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get that it's again it's starting through receivers so they go a little bit earlier, but and I love Judy. Um, you know, Bridgewater there, short A dot, that's kind of Judy's thing, great route runner, he'll get open in the short to in, in the intermediate. I think Bridgewater was a was it was a win for him as far as winning the starting position. But man, you're really taking him at his ceiling. Sutton's not not dead. Fant's there. Uh, you, you have a, you have a probably a really good running game, you know. Um, so I don't I don't I think you're really taking him probably at his ceiling in the fourth round. And what you know what sucks is you know I, I I took him in the ninth round you know a couple months ago. So to to see him going in the fourth, I think that's the guy. That's my one A as far as everyone else kind of going crazy and the hype go go going wild. All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal this. I, this is not the first time it's happened. I know it's happened before, but we have a tie after all the voting this year. By the way, I voted um, like Adam did. C.D. Lamb was my number one. My number two was Javante Williams. Um, so it ended up mm. being Antonio Gibson got one point. Javante Williams got one point. But Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb, amongst our panel tonight, tied for five. Now, Adam, because you are the anchor of this program, we go with what you say. So the official hype guy for the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour this year is indeed the Hard Knocks Wunderkind, C.D. Lamb. So congratulations to you <laughs> for making that decision and helping or hurting people. I don't know which way it's going to go um, tonight uh, on the program. Um, listen, it was a pleasure talking to you. We all follow you on Twitter at Adam underscore Krautwurst. Adam, when is the next Deep End uh, Fantasy Podcast coming out? Are you guys going to do any before um, the main event in Las Vegas? Oh yeah, we'll do one recap in this this weekend, uh, early next week, um, and you can find that on our deep end uh, FF1 on Twitter, and then also I think it streams on the Draft Sharks YouTube channel, and then we'll do one, and then I think we are podcasting in in Vegas the following week, so uh, we'll be there live oh podcasting. Okay. Yeah, we'll try to we'll try to get some guests on. We'll try to I mean my schedule. And Mike Shope's schedule is so busy with drafting because that's, that's the fun part. But we'll try to we'll try to get some guests on out there. I'm super excited to meet people that I haven't met yet, you know, because um, that's that's kind of where where everybody goes. So yeah, we'll be we'll be broadcasting live from for, for, from Vegas. Are you guys tag teaming the uh, bare knuckle challenge on Thursday night as well? You and Mike. We are we are doing the bare knuckle challenge, and he's like a rain man. Like I'm trying to convince him just to do the whole thing himself. Because I'm worried, you know, I'm, you know, we're, we're going to kind of tap. He's going to kind of tap out ha- halfway through. But I'm like, I'm like, he's so good at like these names. Like, I don't want to screw the thing up. So I might just, I might just disappear. So he has to. Plus, it's after the Thursday night game. Like, we're all going to have a couple of pops there. It's like, I might just disappear right. and make him force him to kind of do the whole thing himself. <laughs> Yeah, which, by the way, if you're thinking about coming out to Draft Live in, in, in Las Vegas, remember, you get into the FFPC uh, viewing game party for the Cowboys and Buccaneers for free, and there's going to be food, drinks. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, for sure. But now, Adam, if he is the rain man, shouldn't he be going second and you be going first and, and you handled the first 14 rounds? That's a great, that, is, that is a great point. That's probably the way it should be uh, because, again, I, I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to screw it up in, like, the 19th round. But I'm telling you, he's so locked in, <laughs> bulky, bulky. There'll be people will be will be will be live streaming 
main event drafts on all the various podcasts. He'll be texting me like next pick, next pick, the pick after the pick at look, he's just, <laughs> he's just, he sits at home and does this. So like, I, I don't even want, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I'm just going to kind of let him loose and let, 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 let him do his thing. All right. So I, so in order not to mispronounce his name for an umpteenth time, I'm just going to start calling him Dustin Hoffman from here on out. And I think that's the safest <laughs> that's way to do it at this point. Sure. Definitely All right, listen, off. we follow you on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. We follow you on Twitter at Adam underscore Krautwurst. Don't forget at DeepEndFF1 on Twitter. Um, new podcasts coming out there, including live, uh, live podcasts coming up from the FFPC live events at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Adam, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for anointing CD Lamb. And I'm sure we will hook up uh, as the weekend goes on here in uh, Louisville talking a little bit more fantasy football. Thanks so much for hopping on tonight, man. Sounds great, Bucky. Thanks, man. Adam Crutworth, ladies and gentlemen, a former top five overall finisher in the FFPC main event, joining the podcast tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for drafting season here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Uh, we, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't, um, number one, thank Adam Crutworth for breaking the tie. C.D. Lamb is your hype guy this year. Um, and by the way, Adam, who took him early in the KFFSC main event that we did tonight. Uh, so certainly he is backing it up and uh, a guy I'm excited about drafting this year. I want to thank not only Adam, I want to thank Rob Fetcher, Danny Miller, and by the way, Jay Reed, who was supposed to be on the program tonight, um, undergoing uh, some nasty, I don't know if it's food poisoning or something, um, but he's a little bit sick. I hope to hook up with him this weekend in Louisville. He's here. He just uh, was a little too ill to join the podcast tonight. Hopefully uh, I'll get the chance to talk to him and Scott Connor and the guys from the Chasing the Helmet podcast um, coming up this weekend. A lot of FFPC players here in Louisville. Can't wait to, uh, to pick all their brains as I try to win the KFFSC main event. Probably won't happen, but listen, it's going to be fun trying. I want to thank the KFFSC, the FFPC, Farrell Elliott, Rob Bryson, of course, each and every one of you. As I pointed out earlier, we will not have a show next week. It is the Labor Day Draftathon for the Football Guys Players Championship. It is an all-hands-on-deck scenario. Now, if you're not familiar with the Football Guys Players Championship Draftathon. Um, for every draft we do that, that goes off on Labor Day weekend, the FFPC and Football Guys is donating $50 for every draft field to a certain charity. We switch a charity every year. This year, it's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, LLS, will be donating $50 for every uh, draft that we fill on Labor Day weekend. So hopefully you can participate in that and get in before that Football Guys Players Championship closes up shop this year. Um, I also want to remind you, in addition to um, – oh, and by the way, the following week we're obviously off because uh, I will be uh, working the live events out in Las Vegas. Farrell will be drafting at the uh, live events uh, for the FFPC at Planet Hollywood as well. We will return on September 17th. That is the first Friday after week one. The best ball tournament number two is underway. That is filling way faster than best ball number one. So $125, you can get in on that, and you can win fifty grand. Uh, certainly a good ROI there. Uh, Dynasty Startups, the slow drafts, we, go, we close those out this weekend. Um, we'll have some live drafts. Uh, there's already some live dynasties going on right now um, with 60-second timers. Those will go on uh, for the next couple of weeks, but we'll be closing those up soon as well. So if you want to get in on a slow dynasty draft, now is the time to do it. Uh, of course, um, the Football Guys Players Championship, I mentioned the FFPC main event. We have drafts going on each and every day, um, probably like three or four time frames every single day now until the end of uh, drafting season, which will be the day before week one starts on Sunday which I believe uh, is September 12th, um, $400 off each additional main event there. So if you're already in it, make sure you are getting in more so you can have huge, huge, massive savings on that for sure. $400 off each additional main event team. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, invite you to draft in the 2021 KFFSC main event online. Remember the live spots in Louisville and Cincinnati already took place. Um, and the Louisville ones are already spoken for. So make sure you're drafting online in the KFFSC main event. And uh, enjoy the rest of the drafting season. We will talk to you again on September 17th. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for listening, everybody. And your KFFSC weekend officially starts now.
This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by MyFFPC.com. It was broadcast live and heard around the world. Balky and Farrell will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from guests much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. Thanks to Frederick the Younger for our outro music. Follow their music at frederickthejunger.com. You can download their music there as well. Um, it is, I don't know if you guys can hear this, the ambience in the background. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, Petrie and Larson, who uh, won the KFFSC main event last year, they're in the house. I just drafted with them. we got Bobby Sangerman here, Bob Butterfield, Jim Cole, who you heard on this program last year. Of course, J.A. Carey is here as well. Uh, a ton of who's who. Um, I have uh, Drew Maselli here, Dave Gerzak, um, Danny Mueller, obviously you heard. It is, uh, it's all happening, as they would say, in, um, in uh, Almost Famous. And uh, it's all happening this weekend. Good luck in all your drafts. Um, we're, we're happy to be a part of it, of your fantasy analysis. We don't take that for granted here at the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. And we'll either see you in Vegas or we'll talk to you again September 17th. Have a great drafting, uh, rest drafting season, everyone.